Hello you guys, week four. Holy moly, right? Week four of our t-shirt quilt along series. We have made it this far and today I'm gonna to talk to you and show you different ways to quilt your quilt and to square up your quilt and how to make the backing for your quilt. It's gonna be a ton of information, so grab yourself a cup of coffee. I'm in the house right now because it's raining outside and my little quilting studio is in the backyard. <laughs> But I was so anxious to come to you guys and start filming today so we can get this party started. Uh, if you want to skip through to the teaching segment, fast forward until you see the little Lisa Cape and Quilts uh, logo go across your screen and we're going to jump into the teaching right after that logo. In the meantime, I want to have a little chat with some of you guys. Uh, I believe in being a totally transparent, okay? And this part of making this series was the most intimidating for me because I'm gonna be really honest. Quilting a quilt on your domestic machine is not that simple. Some of you are gonna breeze right through it and some of you are going to be like I was and you're gonna get frustrated. So today I want to show you some things that are going to aid in this process. Different ways to um, finish your quilt so where if you're getting frustrated, you can choose a different way to finish your quilt. Okay, so don't lose hope. When I started in 1999, I had to learn from books. I'm pretty sure YouTube wasn't out. And my aunt, who was an avid quilter, was no longer with us. And so I didn't have any teachers. But she gave me some books and some rulers and some fabric. And I started making quilts. I found the whole process, while I was excited and eager to learn, I found it very frustrating. Okay, because my mind doesn't learn from books. I learn from seeing it being done and from hands-on experience and learning that way. I made quite a few quilts uh, back then, and um, here's a little God story, okay? I made those quilts, and I got away from quilting for many, many years, okay? From 2000 until recently, a few years ago. A few years ago, I was sitting in my Nana's uh, family room on a Saturday morning like we always did, and my aunt said, can you make me another quilt? And when she said that, the first thing I thought of was, um, no. <laughs> I was not looking forward to it. I had put my sewing machine away. I only brought it out for small little simple projects, right? I hadn't thought of quilts in so long. I didn't even have most of my quilting supplies anymore. I had kept a book from my aunt. I had one crate of her fabric left, and I had her ruler that she gave me. Everything else that I had purchased, tools and gadgets and quilting stuff, was long gone. And so she asked me, she said, can you make me another quilt? At night, when we all sit down and watch TV, everyone debates on who gets to use this quilt. And for two reasons, I was like, flattered. Because, for one, the quilt that I made back in 1999 was still uh, usable, <laughs> I was just learning, and so I figured those quilts were long gone, and uh, and two, that they all fought over it, who got to use it that night to watch TV, so it was very flattering, but at the same time, I was really not looking forward to making another, and that is the truth, but I'm going to tell you, the Lord has plans for your life, <laughs> this is how it is, and so who knew a few years ago, when I was doing something completely different, that I would be a professional quilt maker and that I would quilt quilts for other quilters. I had no clue. So I came home, I dusted off my sewing machine, I gathered some supplies, and I made a quilt. And of course, when one aunt says, can you make me a quilt, the other one says, oh, I want one too. And you can't make them one without making my mom and my Nana one. So I had four quilts to make. So in the evenings, I would break out my sewing machine, put it on the table, and uh, start making these quilts. 
Putting the top together was a cinch. I've always found that part easy. And it was in February and uh, I had a snowstorm that week. So we were cooped up in the house, not able to drive anywhere very easily. We don't drive well in snow here in the Hampton Roads area of Virginia. We just don't. <laughs> and uh, so we were hunkered down for a week and I finished these quilts and I layered my quilts together, made my little quilt sandwich and I was ready to start quilting. It was my birthday on a Friday and the roads were finally cleared up a little bit and we had plans to go to Outback for my birthday dinner. All day Friday, I sat with my Nana's quilt that I was making for her at my sewing machine trying to get this quilt quilted. And I had only, after eight hours, quilted a quarter of this quilt. In all honesty, this was gonna be the last quilt that I ever made. I was so frustrated I, it hadn't even dawned on me to open up YouTube and start looking for tutorials on how to do this. Like, I was just over it, really. Harlan came home. We decided to go to dinner out, out back. Well, because it was the first night that people could get out and drive anywhere, Outback was slammed, and there was like a 45-minute wait. We decided we're here. We really want to stay, we're going to stay and wait. And we just stood in the lobby and waited. And the whole time I was so down. I was so discouraged because I had put all this work into this quilt and it wasn't going easily. And I was just ready to really give up on the quilt. All of this was going through my mind. And I happened to look over on the bench and there were three little ladies sitting there. And they had these badges pinned to their jacket. And I thought, you know, that caught my eye. And on the badge was a quilt block. And I'm looking and I'm standing there and I don't usually like to approach people. I'm a very inward person. <laughs> but I'm just looking and one catches my eye and I said, are those quilt blocks on your badges? And they said, yes, we are here for the quilt show over at the convention center across the street. And I was like, quilt show? I didn't know they had quilt shows. And uh, so I started talking to them and they told me that they were from another state. They travel here right to my city for the quilt show every single year. And that it's going to be open the next day, and which was Saturday, and Sunday. And I said, did you know that I have spent eight hours today trying to quilt a quilt for my grandmother? And I've been so discouraged. She's like, take the day off tomorrow and go over to the quilt show. So I did. I left the quilt alone. And Harlan and I went over to the quilt show at the convention center. Do you know that that quilt show completely changed my life? Uh, just being a novice quilter as I was, I didn't know they had long arm quilting machines. I didn't know that they had sit down mid arm quilting machines. I didn't know that uh, any of these tools existed and that there was a, a vast overwhelming amount of support out there. I loved the quilt show. We spent all day at the quilt show and I ended up buying a Flynn quilting rack. I'm going to show a picture of what my little setup looked like after this quilt show. This little Flynn quilting rack got me through those four quilts and kept me from giving up on quilting. Fast forward to today. I quickly outgrew the Flynn quilting rack. I purchased a sit down mid arm quilting machine and I worked for a year and a half with that and then I upgraded to a long arm. Now many of you are not looking to go into the business of making quilts. You want to make quilts for yourself, for your family, and for your friends. And I totally get that. 
It's really not where I'm trying to go with my little story. What I'm trying to say is that if you're feeling like this is too much, then stop and walk away from it. This is the part where I was when I was ready to not make another quilt. And what I'm trying to do by telling you my little story is to let you know, do not give up and do not let this be the last quilt that you ever make. Because everyone starts somewhere and we only grow from here. Okay? So I hope my story made sense. I really felt like it was going to speak to somebody who at this point is ready for this to be the one and only quilt that they're going to make. Keep going. Okay? Now we're going to get started with the teaching. Thank you for hanging in during my little story. And uh, we're going to start talking about quilt backing. Let's go. You can use cotton flannel backing. There is jersey material that's polyester and cotton. You can use minky material. The minky is 100% polyester and does not shrink. There is a huge amount of quilter's cotton. Quilter's cotton is 100% cotton. And then you have all kinds of fleece material. Fleece material is 100% polyester. And this is my favorite type of fleece to use. Okay, I hope that answered some of your questions about the different kinds of material you can use for the back of your quilts. No matter what, more than likely, you're going to have to piece together the back of your quilt. Our quilt that we're making here is 60 inches wide. Unless you purchase a material that is at least uh, 68 inches wide, like a 108 fabric that is 108 inches wide, more than likely, you're going to have to piece together your back. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and... Uh, swing you down and I'm going to show you how I piece together very easily the back of our quilt. Here we are, we're ready to start piecing together our back. Our quilt measures 60 inches wide and 75 inches long. So I have said five yards of backing material. You may need less or more depending on how big you've made your quilt. I'm going to put a picture of an free app by Robert Kaufman that I use to determine how much material I need to buy. So if your quilt is a different measurement than this one, download that app on your phone. It tells you so many different useful things. I absolutely could not live without that app. Here's a picture of it right here. Download that, plug in your measurements of your quilt, and it'll tell you how much material to purchase for your backing. I have five yards here. What I do, and let me just tell you, you can research the internet and YouTube and find 50 million different ways to do this. This is how I do mine, and it's just a recommendation to help you out, okay? And we're going to talk just a second about a very controversial subject about pre-washing your, your materials. I do not pre-wash anything. <laughs> I don't like how the ends fray and I don't like having to iron yards and yards of fabric even when it comes out of the dryer it's not completely flat like it is when you purchase it <laughs> so I don't pre-wash anything you can pre-wash yours I do recommend pressing everything when you're done okay and um where was I going with that if you do not pre-wash, if you're not using polyesters for the back, expect a little bit of shrinkage. Washing your quilt in cold water does help. Minimal shrinking. Um, and to use some shout color catchers in the wash, throw three or four of them in your wash and you should not have any bleeding. Now, uh, it's different for everyone, 
this is just how I do my quilts. I personally like when I use a cotton backing on my quilts and it shrinks just a little bit, it helps fluff up and give the really homemade look of the quilt. So I don't pre-wash my fabrics. We're starting with fabric that I just purchased and it has not been washed. What I like to do is fold my material in half. Okay, so I have both ends of my backing together and the rest is folded in half lengthways, lengthwise, however you say that. <laughs> All right, and we are placing the pretty side together. So right sides together, we're gonna take this salvage edge and hold them together. Now I'm hoping that there's enough space that I can show you how this works. And uh, it's gonna be quite large when you unfold it. But I have both pretty sides of my salvage edge together. Okay, and we're just gonna spread this open. all the way down. It's going to get a little awkward bringing, bringing this over to your machine. Thread color. When we are done, we're going to trim off this salvage edge to a quarter inch. We're going to press our seams open, so pick a thread color this time to match the color of your quilt backing, just in case some of the threads might show. Okay, so go ahead and pick out your thread thread your machine and we're going to bring this over and I'm going to show you we're just doing a simple straight stitch all the way down and your back is made. All right, I have right sides together, the salvage edge, and the rest of the back is just pulled up right here resting on my lap. What you're going to find helpful is if you have some kind of surface to the left of your machine that's just going to uh, allow a resting place for all of this material and it won't cause any drag on your machine from the weight hanging off the edge of a table. So hopefully you have some kind of surface to the left just to hold everything in place. We're going to go ahead and start sewing. I've set my stitch length at a 3.0 because I'm using fleece and it is very thick. I might even have to go to a 3.5. Uh, just to allow for an even stitch. If you're using quilters cotton or something that is way thinner than this, a 2.5 stitch length will work for you. All right. Now, because we have not trimmed any salvage edge off first, we're not going to want to sew close to the edge. We're going to bring our needle over or place our fabric so that uh, it is sewing over here and not close up to the edge. All right, and there's different guides on your machine that will help you do that. You could use a piece of painter's tape uh, and use that as a guide just to help you stay nice and straight all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and move my needle over as far to the left as it'll go. And I will use uh, probably this line here, which is marked uh, three quarters of an inch. And that's going to allow, after I've moved my needle over, a good inch into my fabric so I don't get any of these little holes or any of the salvage edge in. And now we are simply just sewing all the way straight down. Line up both top edges even and sew right straight on down. I would do a uh, back stitch at the beginning and the end. When you get to the end, we're going to do a back stitch as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sew this together. Remember, try to stay as straight as possible all the way down to the bottom. There we go. edges lined up as you maneuver all of the fabric through.
we have pieced together our back. So you will have a sew line all the way down your back. I have not cut apart the fold yet. I will do that in just a minute. Now we're going to trim the salvage edge off of our backing. We want to get rid of that because it does create some bulk in the back of our quilt. So we're going to go ahead and remove that now. What I usually do is take my longer ruler and with the quarter inch mark, I line that up on my sewing mark all the way down and just with my rotary cutter, remove everything to the right of this quarter inch line. Just like that. You want to make sure that your backing fabric is laying flat and is not tucked up under where you're cutting so you do not cut the backing of your quilt. And just like that, you remove all of the salvage. Now, when you are done taking that part off, then you can come back and go ahead and just cut apart this fold line. Okay? And uh, because this fleece is thicker, I'm just going to go ahead and use my scissors, making sure everything is flat. Just nip this end here. I back stitched far into this, so this has double stitches still this far in. So it's okay, you can cut that off. And just cut apart your backing. And when you do this, everything should lay open flat. So go ahead and remove the salvage edge off your back and cut apart the bottom fold. And we will be ready for part two. I forgot to mention before we move on to part two where we're going to base this quilt together, you do want to press open your seam all the way down your quilt back, okay? And you just press it open. And you can use spray starch if you like. But we're just going to try and get this seam to lay completely flat. And again, it just reduces the bulk and being able to see it from the back side of your quilt. So go ahead and press your seam open. And then we're going to start basting our quilt. Our quilt back is all together and we are moving on to stage two, assembling the layers of our quilt. If you would like to tie your quilt, you're going to want to pay attention to the type of batting that you use. I'm going to show you a vast array of different battings that you're going to find when you go shopping for your quilt batting. The things that you're going to want to pay attention to is the loft. And the higher number of loft is the thickness of your quilt. Okay, so keep that in mind. How thick do you want your quilt to be? You also want to pay attention to uh, the material that the batting is made from. There's polyesters, there's cottons, there's wools, there's cotton polyester blends, there's wool blends and silk blends, and uh, it can be overwhelming. Here's the thing. If you're tying your quilt, you're going to want to make sure that you use a batting that says for tied quilts, or here's an alternative that might help you out. The same fleece uh, bat, uh, backing material that I used, you can use that as the batting for your quilt. And when you wash your quilt, even though it's tied, it's not going to fall apart over the years. It'll stay together. Or you can eliminate the batting altogether. Okay, it's your quilt. Why can't you make it the way that you want it? If you're tying your quilt, the thing about the batting is that if you do not tie it all over, eventually traditional batting over time and repeated washings is going to start to separate. Okay, so consider that when you are shopping for your batting. I'm going to go ahead and do a slideshow of the batting that you'll find when you go shopping. And we'll talk a little bit about it, but it'll be a quick slideshow. You can purchase your batting by the yard or already prepackaged. You have warm and natural all cotton batting. There is a 
all polyester batting. This type of batting is perfect for tied quilts. This is a very thick type of batting. A popular cotton poly blend batting. Another type of all natural cotton batting. Another type of cotton batting. A fusible batting to baste your quilts with your iron. And warm and white all natural cotton batting. Okay, you guys, we're going to go ahead and assemble our layers. I had to come into my living room so that I had the floor space. I keep adding furniture to my quilting shop, and the more I add, the less space I have to work in there. So, don't mind my living room. I had to move the table out of the way. We're going to use a nice, big, flat surface to assemble our layers. Step one, take your quilt backing and lay the pretty side down. So face down on the floor, nice and flat, okay? Our quilt backing is all laid out flat. I'm going to go ahead and next add my quilt batting. If you are not using a batting, go ahead and skip through this part and you'll be ready to add your quilt top. Your batting, just lay that out and smooth everything nice and flat. The last stage of layering our quilt will be the quilt top. And remember, our quilt back is face down. Our quilt top will be right side up, okay? You're going to want to make sure that you place this in the center and that you have at least a couple of inches of batting and backing all the way around your quilt. Here we are, our quilt is all layered together. We have the backing, the batting, and the quilt top. Before we get started with the basting, I want to remind you that I said this video is gonna be packed with a ton of information. One of the things I wanted to share with you guys is an easy way that you could probably finish your quilt today. What I would do, if you're not interested in machine quilting your quilt, or putting a binding on your quilt to finish it off, I would eliminate the backing altogether, lay your quilt backing on the floor right side up, lay your quilt top right side down so both the right sides are facing together, and sew a seam all the way around your quilt, leaving yourself a good size opening to turn your quilt right side out. Flatten it all out and sew your opening together. And that gives you a fast and easy way to finish your quilt, okay? So if you are over this project and you want to finish it quickly, that is an easy and fast way to have your quilt all done today. For those of you who want to tie your quilt or machine quilt your quilt, we're going to start basting. I have some basting safety pins. You can find these at uh, Joann's. I think even like Walmart has them. They are bowed in the center. And that uh, helps allow to go through all the three layers of your quilt and come up through the top pretty easy. And they also have a basting spray. Now this stuff does have an odor, so if you're doing it in a closed room, uh, just please be careful, have some ventilation and a good airflow, and protect your surfaces 
around your quilt because this stuff seems to go everywhere, okay? But it does offer a quick and easy basting solution if you don't want to use the pins. I'm gonna bring you down closer and I'm gonna show you how I pin baste my quilt. All right, I have a whole bunch of these little pins. My general rule for pin basting is about every hand length away, you're going to want to pay, uh, place a pin. And what this does is helps keep all of your layers in place while you are maneuvering your quilt, okay? Even if you're tying your quilt, uh, I would still pin baste to make sure that everything stays where it's supposed to and everything stays nice and flat. So my general rule is about every hand length away, place a pin. So there's one pin. Here's another. And these bowed uh, basting pins really do aid in going through all the layers and coming back up versus a regular straight safety pin. And this is really not hard. It just can be time consuming because you're going to place a ton of these pins everywhere. All over your quilt. So you can see you're going to use quite a, a bit of them. Maybe two packs of these would do a good size throw like we're making. just like that. Now continue to do this all over your quilt and we're going to meet back up. All right, our quilt is all basted together. In this stage I'm going to show you how you can tie your quilt in four different ways. What I like to use is some embroidery floss and I picked orange only because I think hopefully you can see it on my quilt top to demonstrate how to do this easier. You'll need a needle with an eye that is big enough to feed your floss through fairly easy. This one is not easy. <laughs> they make needles with a larger eye. I recommend those. And of course, some scissors. I like to tie my quilts one of four different ways. And I'm just going to show you real quick. I've already done three. This little thread here and I'm hoping you can see that. If you take your needle and you go from the top down over and back up through your quilt and tie some double knots in your thread you will have these cute little frilly pieces on the top of your quilt. Okay and that's one way to tie it. In reverse if you start from the bottom or the back side of your quilt and you come up through the top and over and back down and tie it on the back side of your quilt you do not have the little frilly things like this your quilting will be a lot less inconspicuous so you could use a floss that blends in with your top and these little marks sort of blend in and are hidden in your quilt top you could also get creative and use embellishments like buttons. And again, starting from the back side of your quilt, coming up through the top, over through your button, back down to the back, and tie off your quilt on the back. Then these little frilly things are on the back of your quilt, and your top is finished like this. And of course, I didn't tie mine, so it's loose. Watch this just like that. All right, and I'm going to show you just real quickly how simple this is. I have all three quilt layers resting on my hand underneath the quilt. You go down through the top, through all layers, and then you come back up from the bottom to the top with your needle. 
pull the floss through. Just like that, okay? And I like to make a good little chunk. It's gonna secure all of that batting and backing in place. And then you're simply making a double knot or sometimes I like to tie it off three times. And you're not pinching it very tight so that it gathers. You're just making sure it's nice and snug. And go ahead and make yourself some knots. Just like that. Then you can trim this off however long you like it to be. And that tie is done. Now, if you have used a batting in between your layers, you're going to want to make sure you do this all over your quilt top. And remember how we went over the quilt battings? Each batting is recommended uh, or has recommendations on the packaging on how far to make your ties to secure that batting and make sure it doesn't shift while washing or using your quilt. So there are four different ways you can tie your quilt. Remember, you can leave your frillies on top. You can bring them to the back and make your ties less, uh, less visible from the front. You can add embellishments like buttons. Uh, no, that was three ways. <laughs> three ways. Oh, glory, it's been a long day and I'm burning up underneath these layers of quilt. Let's go ahead and uh, if you're tying, tie off your quilt. I'm going to bring this out to the shop and I'm going to show you how to machine quilt your quilt. All right, you guys, we are at the machine. Let's talk a little bit about machine quilting. And one thing I wanted to mention is that there's also an option to hand quilt quilt your quilt. Uh, I don't know why I don't remember that as an option. It's probably because I don't have the patience or the time to sit and hand quilt. <laughs> so it's always by machine or uh, I used to tie my quilts. Hand quilting is a good option if that's something that you enjoy. We're going to talk about machine quilting your quilt now and I'm going to show you one of the reasons why I was getting so frustrated and this is something that you might have to deal with at home with your machine. We're going to talk about the throat space or the harp space of your machine and that is virtually the space between your needle and your machine. You can see this one is so small like I can I can fit my just my hand through there. So all of your quilt has to fit in this throat space. And that's why I was getting so frustrated. All right. Uh, the older machines have the bigger harp spaces. And then you could upgrade to like mid arm sit down quilting machines. But what I found is that the newer machines, the smaller the throat space. So this might be something that is going to start getting you frustrated is the amount of space that you have to maneuver your quilt right here. The further along you go into your quilt, the more uh, material that is going to be stuffed into this space. Now some people say to roll your quilt up and uh, fit everything through there, but I find that, that uh, the quilt is a lot less flexible when it's rolled. And that's just me, that the rolling the quilt might work for you. I tend to have everything just loose and my quilt resting on a table so that it's not pulling any tension on my work surface. And I do what they call stuff and fluff. And as you're quilting along, you stop with the needle down and you reposition everything and fluff it and stuff it through there, okay? A walking foot might help you in the machine quilting. I don't usually use mine. Uh, let's see. Use, I like to use the same thread as we pieced our quilt up together. And so something strong and sturdy that's going to uh, withstand the washing and the drying. Much like I showed you in the previous video. Uh, 
we are going through several layers. I used the fleece. It's very thick. I added a batting and we have our t-shirt quilt top. So I'm going to increase my stitch length. Uh, I'm going to start out at a 4.8. You're going to need to adjust to your quilt. Okay, so you're going to take a few minutes, figure out what works for you. For this demonstration, I do not have thread through my machine because I'm going to take this quilt and quilt it with Mr. Bobbins. But I wanted to show you the process. To start, we're going to do what we call stitch in the ditch. And that's virtually stitching in the little uh, crease of your seam line all the way across your blocks where your blocks come together. We're going to do it horizontally and vertically. Now, if you used a quilt batting like one of the ones I showed you that says every 10 inches apart, then this should be okay. Uh, if you use a different batting that recommends quilting in a smaller section, you're going to have to do this quite a bit. Several lines back and forth to secure that batting. Let's go ahead and get started. And I'm going to show you how to stuff all this stuff through there. It might be easier if you start at one end of the quilt and work halfway and then turn your quilt so at any given time you only have uh, up to half of your quilt in uh, this little space here. The main goal is to keep everything nice and smooth and flat. And my layers are so thick that my machine is having a rough time. So you can see how quickly I got frustrated. However, if you've used a cotton or flannel backing, you're not going to have as much problem as I, I am having. My recommendation is just to go slow. All right, go slow. go all the way from one side to the other. If I was using a walking foot this might aid in the process because the walking foot grabs both the top and the bottom and feeds it through evenly. For some reason I just do not like my walking foot. <laughs> so I struggle along. We're going to go ahead and quilt from one side to the other and then lengthwise all of our blocks. I'm going to switch over to a free motion foot and show you how I would free motion quilt this quilt. Okie dokie, I have my free motion or darning foot on my machine. I have a plate over my feed dogs. You can lower your feed dogs if that's an option for you. One thing I want to mention is if you are doing free motion work on your quilt, whenever you stop to adjust your quilt, make sure your needle is in the down position. Now two things are going to affect the way your stitches look. The speed in which you are moving your quilt around and the speed in which you are pressing on your foot pedal and the needle is going up and down. So this is going to take some practice. However, it might be a fun and easy way for you to finish your quilt. So I wanted to demonstrate this. Usually when free motion quilting, they say to start in the middle of your quilt and work out. And I highly recommend that. I'm going to just demonstrate right here how to stipple your quilt. Or what we call stippling. Free motion quilting doing a stipple. This way you are simply moving your quilt underneath the needle all the way through. You will have to stop and adjust and move things around. Again, if you have a table to the side that's holding all the weight of your quilt, that's going to make things a lot easier. Also, a pair of gloves like this. They have them at the store. That really helps grab the quilt top and move things around. So sometimes you'll see me wearing these little gloves.
again you're just keeping all the layers flat and moving around your quilt box. I'm adjusting so my needle is in the down position. You could quilt around your logos. Just like that. Again, making sure all of your layers are nice and flat. I did not baste my whole quilt, so that's why I'm struggling so much. Because <laughs> that would just be all the pins that I have to take out. But as you come to pins, you want to make sure you remove them before you get them close to your needle. But just like this, you could quilt around your logos without turning all of the quilt around up in this harp space. Just that quickly, I went around the little snowman. So you could get really creative and at the same time secure all your quilt layers together and make your quilt last for generations through your wash. All right, that is how I would probably quilt my quilt if I did not have Mr. Bobbins. I am going to load this quilt on Mr. Bobbins. I'm going to give you a short, quick demonstration on how I quilt my quilt with my long arm. And uh, we will meet back when our quilt is quilted. I want to show you two more things. How to square up your quilt and um, get it ready for binding. Alright you guys, I hope I have not lost anybody. That was a ton of information to take in in one video. I know. Today I showed you a quick, fast way you could finish your quilt just by putting right sides face together, sewing around your edges, and turning right side out in a small finishing stitch to close it up. I showed you how you could uh, tie your quilt in a couple different tying stitches. I brought you over to the domestic sewing machine and showed you how to stitch in the ditch or free motion quilt your quilt on your domestic sewing machine. And if all of those options are not something that you're looking forward to, I get it. You could always send your quilt out to be quilted by a long arm quilter. There are many all over the United States. So just go online. You know a long arm quilter. So I would suggest maybe researching your local area, your local quilter field, your local quilt shop, and um, ask around if anyone knows any really good on your domestic machine. So they bring their quilts to me and I quilt them for them. And uh, so I just thought that uh, I would give you a small demonstration of how I'm quilting my t-shirt quilt that we are making in this series. I'm doing an all over edge to edge meandering stitch and I'm adding some hearts in there uh, because I love my Nana. And uh, so I just will start a demonstration We'll just do one row and you can see how this process works if you're interested in having your quilt long armed um, maybe that is the best option or easiest option for you let's go ahead and start quilting
All right, you guys, it has been a long, long day. I have my quilt all quilted. We are on stage five, the last stage you guys have to go through. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and square up our quilt, okay? And this is getting it ready for the binding. There's two ways I'm gonna show you. I have a video, I'm gonna put a link in the description box on how to do a fast and easy binding on your quilt using the back of your quilt okay if you want to do that i highly suggest you jump over there and check that video out i show you how to use the back you could do miter corners and use the back as your binding to do that let me grab my scissors you want to go ahead and trim your batting away from your quilt top okay and i would just use my scissors because your quilt is fairly large and just trim that batting right close to the edge of your quilt okay you're going to do that all the way around all four sides and then you're going to come and you're going to trim your backing to an inch all the way around your quilt Okay, I've left an inch of my backing. This is what you're gonna use to bind your quilt. In that video, I show how you can roll it over, baste it in place, and stitch it down. This would make an easy, fast way to bind your quilt, and you would be done. Now, if you want to do traditional binding, I'm gonna show you what to do. I start just like this. I grab my 15 inch ruler, the one that we used to cut our blocks with, okay? And we're gonna start by lining everything up straight with the edge of my quilt. And we're gonna trim both the batting and the backing straight with the edge of our quilt. like that all right and we're gonna do the four corners first so there's our first corner I'm gonna flip the quilt around and flatten it all down just like that again I align our square ruler up to the edge make sure everything is nice and square and straight I'll get rid of some of this extra in this corner here taking our rotary cutter I still do not have a new blade in that <laughs> holding the ruler down Wearing that corner. You're going to do that for all four corners before cutting the sides off. Then once you have your so uh, all your corners cut, you can take a straight edge ruler and trim your sides. Line everything up straight across. Scoot the quilt down. And you will see where we come and meet up where we squared that corner off. We just align this edge and this edge and make sure everything is straight. Trim that off. So just like that, we have trimmed our quilt. I want to go ahead and finish this up, and we are going to call it a week, you guys. <laughs> I 
again. I know this is a lot of information. However, I truly believe that you are far capable of doing this. I've seen your pictures and uh, keep going. Do not give up. This will not be your last quilt. I look forward to making some binding next week and binding my quilt with you guys. If you are done, if you used the method where you sewed it and turned it and you're done, thank you for watching. If you're going to use the back of your quilt as your binding, thank you for watching. And uh, I highly suggest you tune, stay tuned for next week so you can learn how to do a traditional binding as well. Uh, it's been a long day and I'm super tired, but I so appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in this week. We're going to see you next Sunday for our last week of making this quilt.